Welcome to LigNet. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now is a distinguished former member of England's parliament who served on the Treasury Select Committee, John Brown. He also served as a close associate of then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Mr. Brown was also elected chairman of the Smaller Businesses Committee in the House of Commons. And in addition to a career in British politics, Mr. Brown has a noted career in finance and business having worked at Morgan Stanley and Company and also Barclays Bank. Mr. Brown is a Lignet Advisory Board member. And John, it's so good to see you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Well, so much is happening abroad these days, especially uh, with the global economy. In light of events in Cyprus and in Europe, what do you see as the most likely scenarios for the global economy over these next several years? Well, to fully understand the global economy, the big megatrends within it, I think one has to understand the fundamental f political movement. Uh, the creation of the United States in the Great Rebellion was done by uh, entrepreneurs, basically. Middle class Americans revolted against the abuse of power uh, by the king. And they created an explosion. And America was not merely a country, it was an ideal based on freedom and enterprise. And uh, it was a severe loss of control by the elites of most of the world, particularly in Europe. And since then, I believe they've been trying to re-establish control. And the key to democracy is to have a big, healthy middle class. Like, for example, when they had a revolution in Russia, there was no middle class. So it didn't go to freedom and enterprise, it went to communism. But in America, there was a middle class, and so it went to freedom and enterprise. And they're trying to kill the middle class in Europe and in America. If you take Obamacare for an example, Obamacare, if you're poor, basically everything's paid for you. If you're very rich, it doesn't hurt you terribly. But if you're a working person for a salary or a wage, you really hit, big time. And every time these politicians in Europe and in the United States get up and say, we're doing this, this extra tax, this extra this, we're borrowing this money to protect the middle class. Actually, they're doing it to kill the middle class because they want to get rid of this awful thing called democracy and turn to more control by states, that the statist governments will have total control. And the European Union is a classic example of enormous controls by the state. Now, the world watched this week while the EU and the IMF worked a deal to save Cyprus from collapse. Can you give us a little bit of background on this crisis in Cyprus? And can you tell us whether you believe the bailout there is a good thing or not? Well, I think that the bailout is a good thing not to have a run on banks and a total collapse. But if you notice that what's short of the bailout is increased control and increased subjugation of the middle class. Anyone who's a saver in Cyprus is severely hit. They're only allowed to take so much out a day in, in money. They're only allowed to take so much out of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not allowed to t write checks. Uh, all this sort of thing, which is a, s a limitation on human uh, on freedom uh, and therefore eventually on enterprise and uh, of course it's not new people in America think this is a shocking thing but distance in today's world and finance matters very little and if you take America for example the Fed has been stealing from uh, bank accounts for a long time if you take the last 10 years there's been a 26 percent depreciation in the value of the US dollar which is an average of 2.1 uh, 2.6 percent a year hidden tax. If the inflation rate, you take independent uh, uh, economists like John Williams, the inflation rate is between 5 and 9 percent. Just take the lower limit there, 5 percent. And a half percent you get in a bank, it's effectively in a bank is taxing you at 4.5 percent. So Americans have been paying like 7 percent tax every year on their bank deposits, let alone the tax on their incomes and, and spending sales tax and capital gains and everything else. And so this theft from bank accounts has been going on for a long time, but covertly. Now it's become overt, and it shows the, I think, desperation of the central banks. They're now, they used to do it under the cover of darkness, as it were. Now they're coming out into the open and talking about taking money from people's bank accounts. Where are we in terms of some of the other EU countries, like Greece, Italy, Spain, Ireland, that received bailouts? How do they look now, and what is your outlook there? Well, of course, the bailouts appear to be working because if you put more, it's like the American economy. It looks like it's growing and everything is going hunky-dory. The stock market is roaring. It's all based on the heroin of printing monopoly money. And the same sort of thing is going on in Europe. 
But the northern countries that are paying the bill, like Germany, like Fr uh, England, which is the second biggest payer, and of course the Netherlands, are getting very upset. And if you noticed, uh, the Germans are very worried about their next election, and they're worried they're, they're going to sort of hammer down on people. In England, England's been longing to get out of the European for ages. The Prime Minister, Cameron, has offered them a referendum in 2015. But he knows on the 1st of January 2014, any referendum proposed has to be approved by Europe. So he knows they will never be given a referendum. And Netherlands, just this very day or yesterday, uh, voted they've now got enough signatures to have a debate on the referendum. So I see the European Union splitting from the payers in the north to the receivers in the south. And if it doesn't break up completely, it'll be divided into two tiers. So looking into your crystal ball, John, does the euro survive? Well, I have to say my crystal ball is slightly biased. I'm a Eurosceptic, and so I hope for the sake of humanity and democracy in Europe that it fails. Um, uh, and I think it's increasingly likely that the euro will fail if they don't create a unified country in the meantime. If they create banking union within the European Union, so the whole of the European Union has to salvage all the banks, and the taxpayers from all over the European Union secret transfers of money from Germany, England to, to uh, Spain, Greece and all that done undercover like it is within a nation like the United States. Money is taken from the better off hard workers and given to the poor and nobody sees it. Uh, then if unless that happens it will break up. But they're pushing like mad for these uh, things like a banking union and for the European Union, the crisis to force the creation of the European state. And can you imagine in England after two world wars and everything to have German police on British soil? I mean, the, the reality is shocking, but gradually it's being forced. So, John, what is your <coughs> outlook then for the U.S. economy? What do the events abroad mean for the U.S.? I think uh, the events abroad, for example, if you're an American company that has a large proportion of its earnings abroad, particularly in Europe, I see increasing austerity in Europe. And uh, therefore, if you've got a company that's got a lot of its earnings coming from Europe, you're going to have a harder and harder time. In America, people believe at the moment in the concept of all this money coming from the Fed and uh, that th 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 things are growing. They believe it. They believe stocks are going up. And indeed, they are in nominal terms. But in real terms, the stock market, the Dow, would have to be almost 18,000 now to catch up with its real high. But we're told on all, most of the media, oh, we're at an all-time high. So things are feeling good in America. And you feel good on morphine. And so I think America is the strongest of the economies because it's one nation and vast with great natural resources. And in fact, America has such a spirit of enterprise that it is, has captured back and is pulling back jobs back into the United States now. So they're re-importing jobs even from the Far East where the cheaper labor has now become more expensive. And jobs are coming back into America. And I think in terms of recovery, America is further along the road than anywhere else, and particularly Europe. Now, from an investment perspective, what are the sectors uh, that you think are best positioned right now uh, as a result of the global situation that we're seeing? Well, for the short term, I think American small cap is a very good uh, area of investment. They've been caned more than the larger companies. And as the feeling, I don't say the reality, but the feeling of good coming in America spreads, I think there's going to be more money spilling out of bonds, out of other investments. As as the big cap come, large cap companies become more and more expensive on a P.E. ratio basis, the money is going to spill into small caps. And I think that's uh, one area which should be very good. But of course, I have always believed that people should uh, maintain a heavy uh, weighting towards gold and silver and that everyone should keep at least three months supply of cash in or around their house. Mm -hmm. Because I think what's happening in Cyprus could easily spread to Europe and the United States. What about uh, emerging market economies? Um, are there any that you like? Yes, I, there are. I mean, of course, the, the huge uh, Ben Bernanke and Greenspan-like splurge of money now in Japan is creating an absolute heady market there too, like the United States. Stock market is roaring in Japan. And so there's money to be made there. If you follow the money, even if it's monopoly money today, you can follow it because all the governments support it. Um, and I think uh, a lot of other areas in the emerging markets, because their labor costs are now rising, 
and America is drawing jobs back into the United States, they're going to suffer somewhat. And if there is a world recession, which is the underlying threat, the economies of the producers of the raw materials, like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Brazil, uh, those sort of countries are going to be hard hit because the exports of iron ore, for example, from Australia into China may decrease. They're not going to stop, but their rate of increase will decrease. And so their economies will start to be squeezed a little. John Brown, thanks so much for being with us today. So good to speak with you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Well, thank you very much. I'm so sorry to be so depressing, <laughs> but I think it's best to face reality. We appreciate all of your insights, so thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching LigNet.